Hello viewers, welcome to this exciting video. In this video, we will be looking at the November 2020 Science Paper 1, question B4. Question B4 reads, figure B4.1 below is a diagram showing a stone of mass 2 kilograms that was pushed up a slope from Q to R. Figure B4.1 below is a diagram showing a stone of mass 2 kilograms that was pushed up a slope from Q to R. All right. So the stone was pushed from Q, which is this point, up the slope to R, which is this point, which is the, the topmost of uh, uh, the slope. All right. Uh -huh. And the stone had a mass of 2 kilograms, okay? So uh, we need to bear that in mind. And on the side, we have a point S, which the, the paper is saying is the midpoint. So meaning it is halfway. So the distance from S to T is equal to the distance from S to R. So that is that. So 75 joules of work was done in moving the stone up the slope from Q to R. 72 joules of work was done in moving the stone up the slope from Q to R. A. What is the potential energy of the stone at R? All right. Now, uh, for this question, uh, People may try to think too much and bring in all what they can come up with. For example, one of the things I have seen people saying is that, all right, if this thing, if this stone was, pu was pushed up this, it means that uh, the work done should consider the distance from Q to R through the slope. All right, uh, which to some extent you may say uh, 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 it may be true. You may be tempted to say it's, uh, it may be true. But remember, it is uh, the work done in moving the stone, not the work done by whatever force that was moving the stone. If a force was pushing this stone, if the stone was here, and the force was pushing it in this direction. It means that the work done by the force F in moving the stone will be, the force will cover a distance from here up to here. So this will be our distance, okay? And in doing that, we'll bring in aspects of friction and whatever and whatever. But the work done, okay, on the stone is just the gravitational uh, potential energy, the gain in gravitational potential energy of the stone. Remember, gravitational potential energy is work against gravity. Work against gravity. No wonder it does not depend on the path taken, but only on the change in a height. Okay? So let's be careful on that one. Okay, so the work that is being described here is work against gravity and not the work done by the force. If it was the work done by the force, the force would have been mentioned in the question. All right, so we get rid of all that uh -huh. and we continue with it. Hours. So the work done, we've said work done against gravity is the gravitational potential energy. And the question asks us, what is the potential energy? So if the work that was done in moving the stone up, okay, in moving the stone where up, okay, is 72 joules, it means that the gravitational potential energy is 70 two jewels so that is the answer to a hence the kawan mark meaning there isn't much work even the space for working is limited one mark all right 
Uh -huh. We proceed to B. B. If the stone falls through side RT, what would its potential energy be at S, the mid point? Now, what happens when an object is falling is this. So at the top here, the gravitational potential energy or potential energy is at its maximum value, okay? While the kinetic energy is zero because it's not moving, all right? But once the stone starts falling down, gravitational potential energy starts reducing and the reduction in gravitational potential energy becomes the gain in kinetic energy. So after the object has fallen halfway, it means that we have half of what we started with as potential energy. So the potential energy here at this point is equal to half of what we started with, half of, so here allow me to put uh, prime, okay, to indicate that it is potential energy at the midpoint. So it will be half of the potential energy that we started with, okay? Uh -huh. So what is half of the potential energy that we started with? And the kinetic energy also here will be equal to half also of the potential energy that we started with so that when we add the two we get back what we started with and in accordance with the law of conservation of energy so let's continue so if the potential energy there okay is half of what we started with what is half of 72 so we are just going to say that for at this point the potential energy is equal to 72 72 joules divided by 2 which is equal to 36 joules so the potential energy there is 36 joules so 36 joules that is the potential energy at the midpoint all right let's proceed to c c calculate height tr they want the height tr so from t to r so they want this height all right let's see so we've been given we have been given the mass as two kilograms okay we have been given the potential energy at the maximum point as 72 joules now they want us to find the height so we know that the gravitational potential energy is equal to m g h all right and we've been given that the potential energy is 72 joules that will be equal to the mass which is 2 kilograms multiplied by 10 which is the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by h so what we are going to have is 72 is equal to 2 times 10 20 20 times h 20 h divide by 20 divide by 20 we cancel both sides so 72 divided by 20 so 72 divided by 20 we have 3.6 3.6 so uh, our height is equal to 3.6 meters so we now write it there 3.6 meters so that is the height tr all right we go to uh, c2 c2 velocity of the stone just before it strikes the ground so as we said okay so at this when we are starting here so the maximum potential energy here was 72 joules okay while kinetic energy was zero now at the bottom here uh, potential energy is at its minimum which is equal to zero 
while the kinetic energy is at its maximum which is equal to 72 joules so all the potential energy has been transferred to what to kinetic energy so we are going to use 72 as our kinetic energy just before it hits what the ground where height is equal to zero so we now start we know that kinetic energy is equal to half m v squared so we have kinetic energy which is 72 joules is equal to half multiplied by the mass which is two kilograms multiplied by v squared so two there and two there so we have one multiplied by v squared so we we are going to have 72 uh, is equal to v squared so we are now going to say v is equal to the square root of 72 so v is equal to the square root of 72 so what is the square root of 72 so the square root of 72 is equal to 8.49 8.49 so 8 0.49 so v is equal to 8.49 meters per second so that is what we're going to write there 8.49 meters per second so that is the velocity this brings us to the end of our video if you like the video don't forget to uh to hit the thumbs up uh button and if you've not yet subscribed and you like the content don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you're notified every time we actually have uh, uh latest videos uh thanks for now see you next time